This is a talk which I've prepared with a number of boards so that you can learn to do pictures in your mind. These are mind maps of the energetic integrators. And at the end you should be able to remember a lot of information by simply learning it visually. First of all, I'd like to take you through the differences between the field energy drivers, which we've done on another tape, and the integrators, which we're doing now. First of all, the integrators are structures of information, and this information can get jumbled up. It's very carefully organised within the energy field. First of all, as you see on this diagram, we have elements going on to compounds, proteins, amino acids, cells, enzymes, hormones, other messengers and so on. Then at last we get to organs. Now you see here that this part of the integrator is a little bit like the driver. But the thing about the difference is that the drivers are very specific about the dynamic cell organ function for the organ only. The corresponding integrator is about elements, compounds, proteins, cells, etc. going right up to emotions and we think even to consciousness, whatever that might be. So that's the difference between drivers and integrators. Here's board number two about integrator mind maps telling you about what the map means. Ancient TCM system can be updated. In other words, we've been here before. The Chinese had these list of correspondences, they called them. They published books um, many, many hundreds of years ago indicating what seemed to have an energetic affinity with what. Then Fraser came along and said, hey, wait a minute, we could organise this in order of frequency so that we can organise the information even better than before. And this is done on the basis of matching. In other words, I've done hundreds or possibly thousands of matching experiments to see whether we can get a match between such and such an integrator and such and such a body tissue. And all of this took years and years and had to be done several times with controls, etc. So what we're telling you now is not traditional Chinese acupuncture information at all. The reason is that a lot of TCM material is based on crazy theories about the universe like yin and yang that we don't buy because we're starting again trying to make natural medicine more scientific and less based on hearsay information. So just for you to remind you, integrators are very broad. They cover literally from the element right up to your emotions and consciousness. Okay, the elements are in the low frequency part of the spectrum and the emotions and consciousness higher frequency. If you've been trained in homeopathy, we're talking about broad spectrum remedies, which in homeopathy, of course, are called polycrests. These are mega polycrests. We then have to remind you that every integrator has a matching driver, more or less. And the simple fact is the protocol tells you fix the drivers first because they help the integrators in their work. You can't get healing without energy, so we make some energy before we try to do the healing. Very simple. In traditional Chinese medicine, there was all this idea of twelveness. There are twelve meridians and so on. It turned out there was some basis in fact of that because after many years of experiments, we discovered that we could relate the twelve Chinese organ meridians to parts of the electromagnetic spectrum 
which was an extraordinary development. No one has ever found these meridians. They don't exist. They exist in the QED field only. And if you can't measure the QED field in any way, you've got no measure of their existence. However, let's look at the information flow of energy in the quantum electrodynamic field. That is, we're looking at a manifestation of energy in its field form where it is very hard to measure. We start with subsonic sound below one hertz. And here we have what are called longitudinal waves or sound waves, which can be three-dimensional waves. If you get a sand pit, dry sand, you put it on a, a plate and then you make a noise, you'll see that the sand arranges itself into little waves. Interesting. Okay, because longitudinal waves make three-dimensional waves when you do that experiment. They do that in space too. Then we have what's called the electromagnetic spectrum after about here. These are all powers. This is in hertz, the measure of a wave length. And that's the power one, the power two, and so on. Going right up to the power 12. So this area here are the energy meridians or the integrators, they're the same thing, that relate to that frequency range. Then we get up to here, we get to wave breakdown. Something happens. In physics we know that something changes there. We could never go really past here. So that means that if we have the wave assembly begins at very low frequency, information is passed through the field, and then there's a wave breakdown right up here. And this is at 10 to the 12 hertz. It's near heat and light, but it isn't light. Light is a bit higher at 10 to the 15th power hertz. What I'm trying to say is something that does not correspond with what you were taught in physics, probably if it was 20 or even 40 years ago. Energy is seen as a continuum. We don't have one sort of energy here, another sort there, and then light as another form of energy. It is all joined together, and that means continuum. Sonic energy, radio frequencies, microwave, heat, and light. We don't have any barriers between these types of energies in this type of quantum physics. <laughs> I've drawn here two diagrams. One is circa 1865. I should have written here 1865 or so. The great genius Maxwell was trying to explain the new electronics, how the electron propagated energy through space. And he gave sets of four equations. You'll find them in any textbook. It's called a sinusoidal wave, and time went this way, and so on. He had T for time in his equations. This is what you learn when you go and learn electronics, and this is what's in everybody's head, because it's been with us for a very long time. Then this is 1996. Milo Wolf, an American physicist, Milo Wolf Electron, he proposed that Maxwell could not explain quantum, so we have to drop it, it's out of date. We have to come up with another model of how space is organised versus energy. And he came up with this extraordinary idea of a dual oscillator in three dimensions, a spherical standing wave sphere, a big ball of infinite dimensions, can be very small, can be very big. So a very small thing can show up as if it's been amplified into something very big. And we find this happening in biology a lot, so we want to know about this. He said there are two central points of the electron, and they oscillate. When you get an oscillation, you get a frequency. Every electron has a frequency. F, lambda. 
Okay, what on earth has this got to do with drivers and integrators? We've just done a drawing of an integrator because the whole integrator system will have two central points which correspond to um, the heart and the circulation. This is what makes the system go, for sure. Vascular fitness is probably the most important type of fitness. Ask me about it, I ride my bike every day. <laughs> We've got divisions this way. We've got six here and six there. That's the 12 divisions going like spokes of a wheel, but we've got the spherical part of it, waves going out. This is what he called the exploratory wave of the electron. And time is supposed to be found in this direction, the wave going out. So we've dropped the idea of Maxwell. Electronics does not apply to biology as much as we thought. We now think, at least at Ness, that this is the way to go. Now this talk is really by way of quite a historic one because this is the first time these theories have ever been, shall we say, promulgated. Great word. Information can be taken around the universe by one single electron. And how is this possible? The electron itself has structure. Nobody ever said it didn't have structure, but no one before Milo Wolf ever really described this structure as a theoretical thing to be examined. And if we get the electron has two places where it could be, these can converge, of course, into one, or they can move apart. It's a dynamic system, it is not static at all. But once they do diverge, you can get an interface between them, which as you see must be flat. And there's a flat quantum field which has the information in it. So we can lay information down in layers. This idea of layering was very fondly thought of by some homeopaths. And it's not entirely wrong, except it's not an onion ring, it's flat. Information occurs in a flat plane between the two electron oscillators, and this information can not be destroyed. It's always there, and this becomes terribly important when we say that information can't be destroyed, because then when you're becoming healed, the sickness information has to go somewhere. Mind map for integrator one. This is all you need to have in your little brain. You can even do a flashcard to remind you. Prefrontal lobes, very front part of the brain here. The sensorium, that's all of the bits of sensory cortex, eyes, ears, smell, touch, etc. Twelve cranial nerves they go wrong all the time, the chiropractor's way of earning a living. The bronchi, astonishingly enough, although the bronchi is a dual organ, it is infiltrated by two, possibly three different systems. And when you've got a triple like that, and the pancreas is another one, it means they're hard to fix. And we've got all the spinal nerves, again, the chiropractor's meridian. There is a link to the skin, but I'm thinking, if you think integrator one, you're thinking nerves. The nerves to the large bowel, rectum, anus, and sigmoid colon do not belong here, they belong to integrator six. Integrator two, mind map. Up in the frontal sinus, the paranasal cavities, there's a branch going up here, and it goes back, in the back of the nose, down the trachea, into lung tissue, not 
in so much to bronchial tissue. This is the lung tissue proper. And it seems to have an effect on the midline, and we'll see why in just a minute. We've called this heart, but of course it includes some aspect of the lung and the pulmonary valve. That's all we could match it to in the experiments we did. We tried to match it to the pulmonary circulation and so on. No, this is all we could find. But we did get a lot of matches to the heart itself. And here we've got myocardium, which has got lots of energy going to it because it's a pretty important piece of muscle tissue. Pulmonary valve, coronary artery, coronary sinus, AV and SA nodes are the pacemakers of the heart. That's the outside of the heart, the inside of the heart, and the muscle of the heart. The emotion that you will find expressed that will actually clog up this integrator most is grief, a loss of loved ones, loss of things. This can upset the whole information transfer pattern in the whole meridian. The Chinese always thought that grief was associated with the lungs. There's a secondary ramification about, I've got midline written there. All this front midline, the Chinese thought originates in the muscles around the mouth, goes straight down through the genitals, up and around, back to the mid-lumbar spine, lumbar, lumbar two, three area. All right, how do we do that? If two and six come up on your NES scan, you can say, yeah, there's something wrong with this person's front midline or possibly lumbar spine because it, the effect of it curls around, affects the genitals and the lumbar spine. So you don't mix them, but you can use them 10 minutes apart to affect, this will have a magical effect on lower backs. This is Integrator 3 mind map. Integrator 3 we have called small intestine. Should have perhaps been called spine. As we've got atlas, cervical vertebrae, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, a whole lot. I'm talking about the bones and I'm talking about calcium metabolism. Just think calcium with Integrator 3 and you'll think of osteo porosis, anything with the word osteo in it. Okay, we go across here, we find parathyroid and thyroid are both matched to integrator three. Interestingly enough, when we get candida in the small bowel, which is very common these days, we get pleomorphic forms. So we're not saying this is to treat candida, but we're saying, well, the pleomorphic forms may disappear when you administer the infraceutical for integrator 3. I said may, we, we have no proof. But look at this, the ilium villi, that means your ability to absorb various minerals and proteins. I see valve and appendix belong in integrator 3. Then we've got another one, we've got a back midline which begins about there, tip of the nose back over the cranium, right down the spinal cord, finishing with the horse's tail, the cord of equina. And the way you know that you've got a back midline problem is if we get three, integrator three with integrator six coming up in the same test, those, that particular combination you should spot and say, okay, problem with bones. Very, very easy. You have to infer the diagnosis. The, the nest won't give it to you. Integrator 4 mind map. Thinking of integrator 4 is mainly going to some key areas of the brain. And these are the auditory area of the temporal lobe, the speech area of the cortex. If you have trouble with nerve deafness where there's difficulty in interpreting what you hear, you can hear all right, but you don't know what it is, it's integrator four. 
The speech area of cortex is for learning difficulties of children. Substantia nigra, Google that one. Midbrain is the big structure in the brain that we reach with integrator for. It's the big regulator. Just remember, put on your card, blood pressure, temperature, blood sugar, navigation skills, and learning. I've had chronic fatigue, and I used to go out in the car in a city where I'd lived for 30 years and get lost. So the chronic fatigue affects this particular meridian, this particular integrator, and navigation skills are affected greatly. You just get lost when you go out. The whole tongue can become discoloured or swell up. The Chinese could see a link between the brain and the, the heart, uh, but in fact it's the... Um, it, this comes out in Integrator 4. The bundle of Hiss is the only real link to the heart that we can find experimentally. Going further down, we find there's a big link between heart and bladder. This is psychological problems with the bladder. You link regulation with nerves to the bladder. And the ovaries have one link. The ovaries have several links to different integrators. And last of all, the cervix. This one is the only integrator that relates in any way to blood plasma. The whole meridian is upset very much by bugs. It's upset very much by the MMR inoculation in a proportion of people who get it. That's why learning difficulties, speech area of cortex, slow development of speech skills, I would relate directly to this integrator. And the, pleomorphs, the pleomorphic bacteria related to the Aspergillus niger family and the E. coli family. That covers a huge number of pleomorphs. If those pleomorphs show up in dark field microscopy, which some people do, I know, its integrator 4 should affect them in some way. This integrator is incredibly suspect when it comes to environmental chemicals. Some antibiotics, most antibiotics are fine. One or two of them, if there's a sensitivity, it will come out in this particular integrator. So there's your mind map for integrator four. We have the mind map for integrator five, one of the more complicated ones, I'm sorry. And it's also one of the more neural ones. We've got the pons or the bridge, cerebellar cortex, medulla oblongata. Both integrator five and six go to the medulla, which is our storage area for shock and horror. Okay, so the stored fears belong in integrator five and six. All 12 of the channels, all 12 integrators go to the medulla but if you want a general treatment, which we suggest, it's integrators five and six. Uh, cochlear of the ear, for that's generally regarded as the inner ear or chronic deafness. Again, deafness can be treated with integrator four and integrator five. There are many, many channels. In very many meridians go there, so it's complicated and hard. Um, tonsils is an interesting clue because tonsils is lymphatic tissue, lymph of the organs, T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes both go in this category. So there's a very important hormonal factor here. So if you think about it, it's neural and hormonal in its effect, this integrator. Again, we've got cervical, thoracic, lumbar and sacral, but this time not the bones, but the nerves. Very important distinction. If you want to treat the spine, you've got to look at three for the bones and five for the nerves. And this one too for the discs. Okay. We've got a thyroid capsule. 
The thyroid is in a little cartilage box, so we're talking about the capsule there, not so much the gland. Um, we've called this the bladder channel. We could have called it the nerves to the spine channel or neurohormonal channel. There's a lot of things here. The nerves to the bladder, prostate and penis all will be affected in some way by integrator 5. Now about the hormonal one, we tend to leave hormones alone. We don't treat hormones specifically because it's so easy to get them wrong. We let the body work it out by doing a general treatment and let's just be very very basic and divide it into two. There are two sorts of humans. Well there's only one sort of human but they've got two aspects. Male and female. The male hormones will be five and eleven. I mean more testosterone androgen production. Five and integrator eleven. If that shows up, we know there's a deficiency of male hormone for that person. If you get four and ten together, or four, six and ten together, uh, the female hormones are most likely not talking to each other. It's not much use talking about too much of one, not enough of the other. We're talking about general hormonal integration here. So all I want you to remember is, for integrator 5, is that it's neurohormonal and a little bit of lymph. And from then on, you can construct that mind map for yourself. Integrator 6 mind map. Here are the note. We don't have our old idea of um, zero tolerance. I think it's been dropped. But it's a priority number one. It's the only integrator that must be treated as an order of priority number one. The reason, I think, is that it's so important for the brain. We've got white matter generally. It goes right through the brain, right down the spine. Thalamus, pineal and medulla oblongata. There's quite a big emotional contact thing there. Cerebrospinal fluid, again, goes right through the cavities in the brain, right down the back. We get to the kidneys. We've got brain, kidneys. When we get to kidneys, we've got the kidney capsule itself, glomerulus, calyx, and tubules. So kidney function is right here. The tubules are the functional part of the kidney. There's this curious thing, we've got ureters put in this package as well, but then bladder and the urine, uh, the rest of the urinary systems in another department. We've got this strange link to the sigmoid and anus. Understanding integrator 6 is very important because it goes wrong a lot. We've got the brain part of it, we've got the kidney part of it, which we've mentioned. Last of all, the cellular part of it. If there's nothing wrong with your brain or your kidneys, you're still getting integrator 6. It means there is a cellular difficulty. Chaos within the cell rules when there's something wrong with the nucleus and the nuclear membrane. That's of every cell. Now, trace minerals are very important in animal medicine and seem to be overlooked in human medicine. Trying to find where these minerals fit is something we've done quite a lot of research on, and here we get the things that are higher in the periodic table. Uh, the trace minerals, which are above 10 or 12 in the, in the periodic table system. Lithium, germanium, copper, phosphorus, zinc and cobalt are really right up there. These, incidentally, are needed to make enzymes and hormones all around the body. Remember, too, we said that integrator 6 is one of the female-type 
integrators. In other words, we get precursors of DHEA will fit in this energetically. DHEA is a very long word. It's the precursor of estrogens and progesterone. So the female cycle, you've just got to remember four, six and ten together and you can spot that as a diagnosis of difficulty with menstruation. Integrator 7 mind map. Here I think you only need to keep two things in mind and those are motor cortex and the six organs. And people forget about the six organs because we've called it gallbladder but we could have called it motor cortex and would have been much more accurate. Anything to do with twitches and numbness, paresthesia and so forth. Motor cortex and grey matter of the spine and brain. Remember, grey matter is integrators 7, white matter integrators 5 and 6. The six organs, they're all pretty small ones except stomach. Stomach muscular coat and epigastrium, that's the outer part of the stomach. Duodenum, jejunum, gallbladder and bile ducts, obviously, is a gallbladder system. And the peritoneum, peritoneal cavity generally. As far as blood goes, in Chinese medicine there was always a big link between the blood, called shui in Chinese, and the gallbladder meridian. But our research shows that the actual link is to haemoglobin. That is all. There is a possible link as well with the formation of excess fibrin, which can slowly clog up the arteries in the brain as a precursor to a stroke. Very often something to do with ageing of the circulatory system. So if this comes up again and again with no haemoglobin's okay, organs are okay, what isn't okay? If there's a lot of ageing, you can think of using enzyme treatment to remove the excess fibrin in cases of accelerated ageing. So as a quick reminder, just think of motor cortex, the six organs, all of the digestive system, and blood. The gallbladder meridian is generally thought in Chinese medicine to go to the hips and in particular the great trochanter which is the bit that gives way in um, chronic arthritis and it's also said to go to the fourth toe which can give an indication of some upset to the meridian. We cannot verify this by the matching technique so we simply point, and with arthritis, traditional Chinese medicine will tell you this is very important for arthritis. We can't verify that part of Chinese medicine. We think for arthritis use cell driver and uh, not integrator 7. So there's been some misinformation, we believe, there. So we would prefer, if you remember integrator 7, for the motor cortex function, which means very often just for the treatment of headaches. This is uh, integrator 8 mind map. This we've called the liver integrator. We could have called it the eye integrator because it's the energy channel is supposed to go down behind back of the eye, or the retina, where the um, nerve comes out of the eye. We find, however, hypothalamus has some role in endocrine control, going down to some of the endocrines themselves. I guess, to be quite honest, we have to include the boys as well as the girls here. So we find retina iris optic nerve for the eyes, the liver itself, this covers just about everything, the liver does everything. So um, 
It seems to have very general effect on the liver. Remember, if you're using it for liver, it's a good idea to add cell driver. There's a link between the integrator 8 and the myocardium, not really between the liver and myocardium. These are all part of integrator 8, that uh, the most important tags of this integrator. Myocardium can be certainly affected by integrator 8. Interestingly enough, we get some hormones here. Calcitonin, prolactin and the various estrogens, I think there are about a dozen of them. Ovaries and testicles as well. So there's three compartments. There's the mental interpretation of visual signals, there's the eyes themselves, there's the liver function, which will be taken over partly by a cell driver. We've got the rest of it is hormones and their sex hormones for both males and females. As far as bugs go, a lot of people do a lot of study on strange forms of organisms that aren't in normal textbooks. There's a lot of study being on, done on that in Germany uh, by Enderlin. The bugs that go in this integrator are those abnormal forms of mycoplasmas, which might affect particularly the brain. Mycoplasmas may have some effect on the head. Well, that's integrator eight. Integrator nine mind map. We have the lateral ventricles of the brain. We have the pars intermedia pituitary and the posterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary will belong to integrator five. Trigeminal nerve, it's one of the 12 cranial nerves, of course, so you should also see integrator one and use one and nine together for um, an upset of the trigeminal nerve. Mind you, it might make it worse because you haven't treated the terrain. I'll think about that later. Thyroid is one of those dreadfully hard things that goes wrong all the time. Now we're getting a list of these. We've got the um, very hard to treat things, the things like pancreas, pituitary and thyroid because they've got so many channels going to them at the same time. Thyroid is responsible for production of thyroxine, which in turn metabolism of the liver, activity of the heart muscle. And the way you pick it clinically is from mood swings. You say you get mood swings. Yes, that's your indicator for integrator, integrator nine as far as emotions go. And they'll be hot and cold and so on. You know all that from metabolism. Thyroid is difficult because it's got several different things going across it. I think the stomach channel goes right across the, th the um, thyroid as well. Integrator 9, integrator 3, integrator 5, all going to affect thyroid. No wonder it goes wrong so much. The adrenal glands, it's best not to treat an organ which is in trouble. For adrenal exhaustion, you don't treat adrenals. You leave them alone. They're already overstimulated. You go back and say, what gives energy to the adrenal gland? It's the source energy, source driver. Store up a bit of energy for that gland to produce the hormones. Okay, the adrenal medulla belongs to integrator 9, that is, belongs to equals matches in Fraser talk. And bear in mind that the cortex is energetic integrator 10, completely different sets of hormones. You can learn all about that in the other course. Interestingly enough, we call this mucous membranes, and I'm reminded that the ancient Greeks didn't have a pituitary, they just thought, it was mucous membranes in the head. So when you think of mucous membranes, you think of pituitary. You also think of organs which have them like a vagina, but mucous membranes anywhere in the body will be affected by this. That's why we called it the mucous membrane um, energy channel. This is going to play up whenever there is difficulty with 
source energy. Okay, you'll find there's difficulties in source energy with arthritis, but that means you treat source energy before you try to correct the integrator 9. This may have some effect on arthritis indeed. Everything we're taught about how to treat arthritis is probably wrong from our point of view. So if you haven't been getting huge success with arthritis, consider another idea of that particular problem. Mind map for integrator 10 is as follows. We've got a whole lot of doubles. We're getting into complex territory here. Uh, the integrator 10 is a major trouble spot. We get hypothalamus, which is 9 and 10 at once. In other words, it's such a complex organ, it takes a very broad range of frequency to manage it. Midbrain, again, we've, here it is again. We've got it at 4 as well as 10. Use 4 and 10 together, you're having a very strong regulatory effect. Larynx and pharynx belong to this group, as does the whole system of veins and arteries, the largest system in the body by far is the system of veins and arteries and it goes wrong from about age 21 onwards. We've got also tail of pancreas but also with 12. So there's another double. So if all you remember about integrator 10 is that it's complex and there's lots of doubles, you've got to see what else comes up with 10 before you decide what it might be. So the diagnosis is your skill at matching these. Adrenal cortex, we've just mentioned before uh, in integrator's talk. This is the one responsible for production of all the various steroids and inflammatory. You can see that that must have some relationship with the veins and arteries. When the veins and arteries go, go wrong, there is widespread inflammation of the brain and other spots of the body. We've also got the ovaries and clitoris. This one we said before is one of the meridians for female hormones. And I remind you again, female cycle, we're looking at 4, 6 and 10 as a pattern. You don't have to have all three of them, but you do need two of them. Menopause seems to respond to energetic integrators 5 and 10. Energetic integrators 5 and 10 for that particular problem. The rest, we're looking at, this is a whole huge area of circulatory diseases. And when you get circulatory diseases, there's several things go wrong. One of them is calcium metabolism. To correct that, we're looking back to bone driver as the, um, as the prominent one. For clots and that sort of thing, we're looking at energetic integrator 7 and liver driver. And for the epithelial tissue, which is so prominent around the inside of all the circulatory system, we're looking at skin driver. Remember, skin driver should have been called epithelial driver. Now that's quite enough information there for you to use integrator 10 correctly. The mind map for integrator 11, the stomach channel. As you can see, it follows broadly the traditional idea of the stomach meridian, which means basically the stomach and the colon. The, uh, we can't say the whole gut, strictly speaking, because we just get a stomach muscular coat and the muscular coat of the duodenum and <coughs> large bowel. <coughs> On the way down, part of the gut, of course, is the esophagus. So, interestingly enough, we get stomach meridian goes to the eyes in traditional medicine, goes right across the maxillary sinuses, which go wrong all the time. 
There is no one single treatment for sinus. It depends which sinus. And integrator 11 is maxillary. Um, throat troubles, generally speaking, will be uh, integrator 11. We get bronchi, of course, the top part of the lungs. And remember that integrator 5 is needed possibly at the same time. <coughs> the big cavity is the abdominal cavity, one of the biggest cavities in the body, but remember that the peritoneal cavity was energetic integrator 7. The muscular coat of the bowel is covered here by this part of the diagram, but I think what we have to offer as far as integrator 11 infraceutical goes is its amazing effect on the bone marrows. Bone marrows belong in the long bones and the trajectory of the stomach meridian goes right over the big bones of the leg where there's an awful lot of red and yellow bone marrow here that's affected by aluminium, mercury, lead, cadmium and possibly antimony, we call it antimony, but and aluminum, I can say it, aluminum and antimony. Is that right? Yeah, that's not English. We get also, we've said this is the male meridian. Sure, we get testosterone, but the integrator 11 goes to the male genitals. Testes, vas deferens, epididymis, scrotum, head of penis all of that area, and those in particular, are affected by integrator 11. In traditional Chinese medicine, we go down to the dorsum of the foot and to the middle toe, but we can't verify this by matching to date. So all you have to remember as a quick summary is the gut leaving out small intestine and um, ileum, jejunum, the gut generally leaving out those, and think male, and red and yellow bone marrow. When you treat this, you're tr treating heavy metals, and you'll find when there's something wrong with integrator 11, you'll also go to the heavy metals page in the NES test, and find one or other of these will surely be there. Some heavy metals are absorbed into the mucous coat of the stomach or the bowel. If it gets into the blood, it'll go into the bone and bone marrows. The last one is integrated 12 mind map. Nice and easy. All ionizing radiation side effects, that is whether it's atomic or X-ray, microwave, that's not ionizing, I'm talking about high level alpha, beta, gamma radiation and X-ray. Corpus callosum, this is about learning difficulties and integration difficulties between the left and right cerebral hemisphere this is the big one for that little link between the two hemispheres. It goes wrong a lot in child development, so this one's used for learning difficulties. The Chinese always thought integrator 12 being spleen was about long-term memory. You can make out of that what you will. But look at the lymph. We've got whole lymphatic circulation inside, but le let's look at where you'll see it clinically. Neck armpits, groin, lymph. If there's pain and swelling, you think of integrator 12. Remember, this is lymphatic tissue, not lymphocytes. Lymphocytes was another integrator. You see, this stuff's very, very specific. For the head and tail of the pancreas, we've called it pancreas integrator, but we could have called it lymph integrator, you see, but we've called it pancreas because 11 and 12 together will hit the head and the tail of the pancreas. 12 on its own will affect spleen and uterus. This is, I think, the only, the only integrator to affect uterus. 
I wouldn't give huge dosages of integrator 12 as safe, but I wouldn't give mega doses of integrator 12 in the early stages of pregnancy simply because of its effects on the uterus. That is up to you to use common sense. The other interesting place where we get integrator 12 is in the neurolemma, which is the membrane of the Schwann cell, which is wrapped around the axon and has something to do with isolating the axon from the rest of the body field. In other words, transmission of information through the nervous system. Here we might say something to do with MS. MS is incredibly complex and you may have some limited responses which are worth having. Uh, but that's going to be a long-term thing and it's going to be all sorts of different treatments for different times. Now just to finish up, there are some pieces of information you must have. There is almost no treatment I've ever heard of myself that relates to motor neurone disease and it's a particularly nasty and very tragic disease. If you use integrator 1 and 10 at the same treatment session, uh, 10 minutes apart, you are going to affect motor neurons. Now that's something of, which is of some use. Breasts, tissue and mammary tissue, you'll find 2 and 12, integrators 2 and 12. Intervertebral discs are another complicated one. We've missed it on the way through, so I'll tell you. Intervertebral discs are integrators 5, 6 and 12. And because it's repa repairing of damaged tissue, it's a structural thing, so expect slow and limited results. Ovaries and corpus luteum are integrators 4 and 8 at the same treatment session. The sphincters of the body, in particular bladder sphincter, we're looking at, well, muscle sphincters all over the place. Integrators 4 and 12. For the bones themselves, we're looking at integrators 6 and 10. And for cartilage on the end of the long bone, for example, integrators 7 and 12 in the same treatment session. Well, that completes my talk on the integrators, and I hope you found this really useful.